Back in 2019, I made a video for an up-and-coming indie shooter called Proteus with a simple and what I thought was a relevant title. Well, here we are now in post-apocalyptic 2020. Proteus has just been released on Steam in Early Access, and I think it's about time to update that title because my predictions have been confirmed. As it turns out, Proteus is actually really good. I even went back and found that original email I got when I first backed this thing on Kickstarter. And there's no better feeling than a game you backed finally reaching its goal, but further than that, it actually ending up being great when it eventually comes out. Developed by Bounding Box Software, Proteus is another in a long line of throwback shooters with a level-to-level -level campaign, traditional FPS controls, violent combat, lots of guns to use, and a soundtrack by Andrew Holsholt, who's kinda like the Mr. Rogers of indie game music composers. It all feels like a combination of Brutal Doom and Quake. You've got the high impact, violent shooting of Brutal Doom, combined with the portal hopping aspect of Quake, even down to the avatar for the player, which looks a lot like Rangers. Now, if all you're wondering by watching this video is whether or not it's worth your hard-earned dollary dues, well, then I can answer that question right now with a resounding yes. Yes, it is. Even for early access, this is a highly enjoyable, challenging shooter that's gonna leave you seeing red, literally. Yeah, Proteus might have to be one of the gorier shooters I think I've ever played, at least in terms of the amount of blood that comes out of enemies. Can't think of too many other shooters outside of maybe Strafe, where shooting someone causes fountains of blood to just emanate from all of their wounds. Gets even better when you get some of the enemy types that explode upon death, leaving behind puddles of goo that stain the walls and floors. You even get some pretty sweet dismemberment when you're shooting enemies with limbs missing and chunks taken out of their bodies. It really does look like the kind of game that people who don't play video games think violent video games look like. Like if my parents pictured the most horrifically violent thing they could imagine me playing, this is what they'd come up with in their heads. In fact, the only other time I've ever seen this much bodily fluid in one room was that time your mum and I spent a night in a roadside motel together. Schwacked. Also on the floors of QuakeCon when Doom Eternal first got revealed. Oh, holy shit. This is just an awesome looking game too. It's got 3D models converted into 2D sprites with a deliberately pixelated aesthetic that still somehow manages to show off a high level of detail and still be appealing to the eye. There's a sense of artistry and talent behind the texture work and the lighting. Doesn't just lack details as a way to mask a lack of creativity. It's a purposefully antiquated visual style that can also be customized in a whole heap of ways through the options menu as well. Proteus is also a bit of a challenging game too, with six different difficulty modes on offer, and it does seem a lot tougher than that early build that I played last year, which I do think is a good thing. Depending on the difficulty mode, enemies are going to hit you really hard. And when you're swarmed by a bunch at once, your health can drop off before you've even managed to make it to the other side of a room. And it's kind of easy to get overwhelmed and trapped into a corner if you're not paying attention to enemy placements either. Enemies really just do in some ways feel like reskinned versions of Dooms. You've got basic zombie men, then there's tougher ones armed with a shotgun. There's the equivalent of imps, pinky demons, and even pain elementals who spawn in these little exploding skulls. The goal of each level is often to find a rune and then escape to the exit, and often once you've done this, tougher enemies are going to spawn in to try to stop you, which almost kind of reminds me of how the time splitters would spawn in in those games to chase after you. Then the sections of each map are split up into mini arenas where enemies are going to spawn in when you flip a switch or pick up an important item, and you can't leave the area often until they're all wiped out. In between levels, there's a map screen where your position is represented by, I don't know, I guess a public toilet icon. And then once you collect a certain amount of runes, you can move through to the next section. In terms of just basically shooting shit, I mean, this is about as gratifying as it gets. And if the visual of an enemy exploding into meaty chunks isn't enough for you, well, I'd hope the sound effects hopefully would be. Proteus does have a bit of a by-the-numbers roster of weapons, but it still somehow manages to make them seem fresh, which is kind of odd because there's not really anything here we haven't seen before. You start off with your bare fist and only a pistol, both of which won't even get used all that much as soon as you come across the old staple, the shotgun. 
The shotgun has to be reloaded manually, which is about the only un-old school thing it has going for it. And the alternate fire mode is a much more accurate, powerful and focused up shot. And in case you're wondering, yes, the shotgun fucks. It's also a bit of an exploit in the game at the moment too, where you can swap to another weapon after firing to skip that reloading animation entirely, which increases the fire rate as fast as you can possibly swap back and forth, really breaking the weapon entirely. Towards the end of the game you'll also get the super shotgun, but this puts what you'd expect a normal super shotgun to be to absolute shame. It sends other super shotguns crawling home with their heads bowed and their tail between their legs. Because instead of only firing two shots at once, this bad boy fires off four. The answer to the age old question, what's better than more shotgun? Even more shotgun. There's also going to be an automatic shotgun added in later too, but I struggle to even imagine how that thing's possibly going to beat this beast. Which, did I mention, also has that amazing ability to just turn enemies into liquid at point blank range. For automatic weapons, you've obviously got the pistol, but then you also get dual submachine guns, which can be fired either one at a time for better accuracy, or both at the same time, which obviously increases damage at the expense of weapon spread. Along with another returning champion, the minigun, Old Painless, with the alternate fire mode for this thing keeping the barrel spinning, which removes that wind up time before you can fire. Why this thing has a reflex sight on it though, I've got no idea. Then of course you've got the grenade and the rocket launcher, both sharing the same ammo type, and as far as I could tell, there's not really that much of a difference in damage between either of them. I'd say the rocket launcher is probably the best of both of these though, only because the rockets don't drop off over long distances like the grenades do, but both of these can empty your room pretty quickly and enemies almost conveniently seem to clump together to assist you with this, so that's kind of nice of them. The last couple of weapons are more energy based. The arc rail is one that I can best describe as a lightning gun slash railgun combo. The primary fire shoots out red lightning that chains to nearby enemies, and the alt fire is a zoomed in charged up fire mode that lets off this one super powerful blast. And if you can line up a bunch of enemies, the shot's gonna pierce through all of them as well, which is pretty awesome. Ow! This thing right here is the closest we get to a sniper rifle or a railgun, and it becomes really handy in some of the levels where they like to put the enemies on ledges on the opposite side of the maps. Seems to take out most basic enemies in a single hit, which is kinda useful when you get swarmed by like a dozen of these assholes at once. Finally, you've got another staple for any self-respecting sci-fi retro throwback shooter, and that's the plasma rifle. And this honestly might be one of my most favorite plasma rifles in, I don't know, any game ever. The sound effect combined with that fast firing speed is just awesome, and it also has a really cool alternate fire mode, where you can lock onto an enemy and then every shot fired automatically homes in on them, regardless of where you're aiming. My only complaint right now with the shooting is that selecting weapons by default is kind of finicky. Each weapon is broken down into a category depending on what kind of ammo it uses, right? So the pistol, the submachine gun and the minigun all use bullets, so they form one category. The shotgun and the super shotgun obviously share shells and the rocket and the grenade launcher again share rockets. And it kind of becomes a bit of an issue when you're trying to swap through these weapons because you can't simply bind all of the shotguns to number 3 on the keyboard for instance, or the rocket and grenade launchers to 5 if that makes sense. There is a weapon wheel of sorts here, even though it's really less like a weapon wheel and more like a weapon chart, but it's not all that smooth if you're trying to select weapons in a pinch. So what I ended up doing was having to manually bind the weapons to keys that I was familiar with. So obviously my pistol went on number 2, the shotgun on 3, the minigun on 4 and so on. Which yeah, it works in the current build, but if the controls menu is anything to go off, well then it shows that they're planning on adding in a bunch more weapons in the final release. I guess my point is, I just think they're going to have to work on a better way to incorporate weapon swapping into the gameplay in a smoother way.
I think recent games like Doom Eternal and Ultra Kill have almost got a lot of us into that routine of firing off a couple of shots with one gun, then swapping out to something else. I'd kind of compare Proteus's movement controls to maybe Doom 2016, just without the double jumping and the ledge grappling. But then with the flow of the combat, it sits somewhere between a game like Doom and a game like Quake. The speed and pacing of the combat finding a groove where things are still chaotic and hectic, but the difficulty mode is what's going to dictate whether or not you're going to have to be flicking your aim from enemy to enemy like you hopped up on monster energy drinks. You don't have any kind of secondary abilities like bullet time, ground slams, or any of that kind of stuff either. It's just a much more down-to-earth stripped-back shooter. You can walk, run, and jump, and that's about it. The enemy spawning in does go against the grain for enemy placements in those older kind of games, but the fundamentals of the shooting I think have more of a connection to these older titles than the newer ones. The lower ammo count for some of these weapons, I think, also reinforces the more deliberate nature of the combat. I mean, you only get 10 maximum rockets, for instance, for the rocket launcher, and I think it's only about 30 or so shells for the shotgun. That's more than enough if your aim isn't terrible, but it just means that you can't chainsaw someone in half for more ammo or light them on fire for more armor, or, you know, kill them at point-blank range and cover yourself in their blood to get your health back. It's just a more traditional system of resource management, one dictated more by the level designer than anything else. And it's kind of ironic how something so old school can almost kind of seem refreshing. You can also kind of get away with circle strafing in some of the rooms, but some of the enemies throw their projectiles in that way where they throw them ahead of you to hit you where you're going, as opposed to throwing them to where you were, if that makes sense. I'm just trying to emphasize that there's a lot here that makes this far from just being a mindless shooter. I played through the whole thing on very hard for my first playthrough and I thought it was challenging but fair. To be honest, I only died twice, but both of those times happened to be in the same room. A room that probably could have offered up a bit more mobility and breathing space, but the level of challenge throughout the rest of the game does seem genuine, I mean mostly. I think another pretty big issue is that there's not really any kind of feedback to when you're taking massive damage. And I think even something as simple as your character making a more recognizable pain sound so you're more aware of when you're getting your shit kicked in would be hugely beneficial. In this current build, there's no quick saves, but there are checkpoints. And when you die, you're thrown back to the nearest one with, as far as I can tell, no real penalty. So I don't really know what the end game's gonna be with this mechanic either. With this early access version, you're looking at about two to three hours of content just to simply get through it. Then after that, there's a few different trial maps to complete and you can go back in and look for all of the secrets. Not to mention you can try and get a good placement on the leaderboards if that's the kind of thing you care about. Though I think bragging about your spot on a gaming leaderboard is about as impressive as bragging about how many pieces of Lego you can fit up your ass. Overall though, this is an easy game for me to recommend because it just has so much more working for it than against it. I often kind of judge these games on how they feel when you immediately pick them up and start playing, and I think with shooters in particular, you're going to know within minutes of playing something if you're going to like it in the long term. Proteus is one of those games you can just pick up and hop right into for the first time, and after playing it for two minutes, you're playing as naturally with it as if you've been playing it for two hours. The price tag might be a little bit high for some people though, and the early access thing is definitely going to turn some people off, and look, that's understandable. What's also going to be keeping Proteus alive, I think, is going to be the community content. This thing comes with a level editor, and seeing people remake levels from Doom or other games like Duke Nukem 3D is going to play a big part, I think, in keeping people engaged in the long term. But at a time when glory kills, fast weapon swapping and shotgun parrying is all the rage, I don't know, it's kinda neat to play a game that isn't afraid to really go back to the roots of first person shooters, with a great mix of mechanics from the old and the new. Especially one that also happens to also let you turn enemies into tomato paste.